Kia ora, ko Sharon Holt, tōku ingoa. Today I'm answering a couple of questions from people who are fans of the page and also adding some of my own new learning. So somebody's asked me about the pronunciation of this, which literally means the mat, and if you're a teacher you will probably know that it's the name of the early childhood curriculum. So this is te, which we've talked about before, te. So these are the same, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Te, fa, riki. So the riki is quite short. Riki, it's not riki. Te fa riki. And the emphasis is on this syllable because there's a macron. Te fa riki. Te fa riki, the mat. And that's the name of the early childhood curriculum. And lots of people think it's te fa riki. But this is te and this isn't riki because the emphasis is on where what syllable the macron is. Te fariki. You might, might also see it written this way and that's exactly the same because if you see two vowels exactly the same together then it's usually as if there was one with a macron. Sometimes you'll see a little hyphen between and that's more likely to be a uh, a. Uh. But for this um, exercise that would be the same as te whāriki. And then the other one that somebody's asked me about is this, which is the name for the Māori name for Mount Maunganui. So Mount Maunganui, which people usually say Mount Maunganui, Mount Maunganui, the real name for that is Moao. Moao. So we've got two double vowels, two diphthongs here. So we've got mo and then ao, mo, because we've talked a lot before about the au being o, o, and then this one is ao, like the ao at the beginning of ao te roa, mo ao, mo ao, that's the name for Mount Maunganui. And then these ones I just wanted to add because I've realised that there is a lot of, um, it's a difficult thing for people who aren't used to saying the or sound when there are quite a few of them in one word because if we're not saying that sound a lot because we're not a fluent Māori speaker then these muscles aren't really exercised and, and it feels weird using that sound which is why it feels a little bit harder to say ro, to, ru, a putting a break after these vowels ro, to, ru, a because we're going like this for a bit of a longer time ro, to and leaving our mouths like that and that's tricky and that same with Ngo, 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 ta ha, ngo, ngo, ta ha, which people say nonga ta ha, ngo, 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 ta ha, o toro hanga, o toro. So in that one we've got three O's together, o toro. So that's why that's very hard to say. But just because something is a bit harder to say doesn't mean we shouldn't try because how to how we get um, over things that are hard usually in life is that we practice and if we've got children we talk to them about well just because that's hard doesn't mean you shouldn't practice to make it better and that's why we need to practice these out loud and that's why I encourage you to practice, practice on the signposts all around us in New Zealand so that when you come to those signposts, you're practicing all of those vowels and breaking after every vowel and saying it out loud and then as we practice it makes it easier. These are still quite hard for me. It's still quite hard for me to say ro to rua, but I notice that each time I do it, it gets a little bit easier. O toro hanga, it gets a little bit easier each time I say it. Ngo ngo taha, it just, I'm getting used to that feeling of my mouth in that position. And this is the last one for today, o hopo. So o hopo, which is just south of Hamilton, has got o at the front and the back, both with macrons, o hopo. So a lot of people call that o how po. So they're actually mispronouncing every single syllable. This is never o, this is always o. O, and this is ho rhyming with mo or ho poor or ho poor 
So hopefully that's helped you to feel really encouraged about practicing. And if you're out and about today driving around on this beautiful Sunday and perhaps enjoying family time with your with your whānau for Father's Day, look at the signposts around you and start pronouncing them out loud. And make it a fun family activity and get your um, get yourself used to doing that and your brain will hear your mouth speaking more of the real and it will become more normalized to say those place names correctly. Ka kite.